IBM is teaming up with Slack, GM, and Teva Pharmaceuticals as the company expands its reach of its Watson artificial intelligence technology. IBM has placed a huge bet on Watson being a big part of the company's future. The announcement's all coming out of the IBM World of Watson conference in Las Vegas, where IBM CEO Ginny Rometty joins us now with more. Ginny, thank you so much for joining us. It's great to have you. Yep, thank you, Emily. Nice to be here. So you're announcing several new partnerships today, Slack, GM, Teva Pharmaceuticals. Just how many more people will Watson touch as a result of these partnerships? Yeah, we just, we just had a great conference here. In fact, over 20,000 people, World of Watson. And as I just told the crowd, I said, right now, Watson already touches hundreds of millions of consumers. And by the end of next year, we're on a path to be a billion. It will be a billion. And that is through, you just mentioned, Emily, some of the customers that we're partnering with. So you mentioned General Motors now coming out in the 2017 vehicles, OnStar Go, which is a partnership with Watson about really using your time in your vehicle in a very personalized, but safe way or Teva which is all about changing the Teva by the way for those who don't know it's the world's largest generic manufacturer and what we're doing all around making the whole process and kind of delivery of drugs in a different way with Watson and you talked about slack and we had just announced by the way last week uh, the work now out and available with quest diagnostics which really does make precision medicine available to almost everyone in the United States Let's start with the GM partnership, bringing Watson to the road. Give us an example of how Watson will be powering a new driver experience. So this idea, and again, keep it simple, but it's interacting, GM has got in about 1.5 billion pieces of information from Connection, and you individually, permissioning what happens here so the car gets to know you and everything from you have a prescription to pick up for your children on the way home telling you where to get off early when to go get it to pre-ordering paying for your coffee to another example would just be look you're going to run out of gas getting you to the right place paying ahead at the pump for you to get your gas and it just goes on and on from there so this is just the beginning of it and in fact there are a number of partners as part of this first round coming exxon mobil you've got uh, mastercard parkopedia a whole number a whole group of partners you could see more being added on but in a very permissioned way so it just changes that experience because people on average in their lifetime spend 38,000, 37,000 hours in their car. Tech companies from Apple to Google to Uber are vying for control of the car. What makes you think that Watson and IBM, GM plus IBM, have something special that other technology companies can't replicate? Well, in this case, using Watson and the artificial intelligence can't replicate it, and therefore GM has got data that can't be replicated either. And by the way, others have different kinds of data of their own that can get used. So I can see us being able to play a role across many different parts in, in auto, and we do today, by the way. So whether it's Daimler car to go or it's work we've done with Honda on batteries, there's many different places that this type of cognitive intelligence will come into play. And it isn't just autonomous driving. We do participate, by the way, on autonomous driving with subsystems in the car. So this is a whole continuum of opportunity that's out there. And there'll be all different forms, whether it's ride sharing, autonomous driving, your own owned car. Um, and there'll be a very wide variety of ways you'll participate. Now, you say that Watson is differentiated because every client basically gets their own individual version of it. And that, as I understand it, IBM won't own or use that data. Why is that important? And what advantage does that give you over other companies like Google, like Microsoft, like Amazon that are pushing hard on AI? Yes. Yes, now, now look, as you, as you know, we've uh, been building Watson for quite a period of time, and in fact, a decade before we even did Jeopardy, and now in this five years, how far we have come. And we really made some strategic decisions that make Watson the AI platform for business and knowing what matters to business. And in every business, you've accumulated a lot of information. It's yours, so its value is yours, the IP is yours, but so should be the competitive advantage. So we've made a choice of an architecture where 
where we'll bring data, we'll bring Watson and algorithms, and you bring your data, but the insights go to you as the client, and we're able to separate those so they don't train the base platform. And you make choices on that. And to a client, that's extremely important, because there isn't a client in any industry that isn't going to have as the basis of their competitive advantage be this information. Everyone we know. And so this is perhaps, in my mind, not just mine, clients' eyes, one of the most important decisions we made. Now, Jenny, you've been hard at work transforming IBM, and Watson is a huge part of that. How would you rate, evaluate your progress so far, given that, as we all know, transformations in tech are not easy? Yes, well, and you know, we're 105. We are the only one that has made it through multiple transformations and multiple eras of technology. And I'm proud, the work of 400,000 IBMers and just last week when we did earnings, you saw the strategic imperatives. They're now $32 billion in size, 15% growth, 40% of IBM. And you'll find Watson is a silver thread, not only through those, but you'll see it in many parts of our base business. If you look at our big technology services business, the largest in the world, much of what they're doing is porting clients to the cloud, and Watson's a piece of that. So IBM at the same time has several legacy businesses in addition to these new businesses that you're pushing into and investors still seem to be focused on these legacy businesses. How should we think about you know, the performance of these legacy businesses versus your newer businesses over the, the short term and the long term? Yeah, Emily, and, and you know, one thing is, I don't think of them as legacy businesses. Um, we've divested of a set of businesses that we thought were commoditizing and better with others, but the businesses that we have, these are really important core franchises that we run. And if you look at our global technology services business, our systems business, these are really important parts, have been modernized many times. They may not be in growing markets, but modernized for whether it's blockchain, mobility, security, and to have Watson be part of them. So they're really an important important piece. If you look at what we do for running the banks of the world, the airlines of the world, the manufacturers of the world, so they work together. And the announcement with GM is a good example of that. We'd been doing work out of our global business consulting services unit for a long time on OnStar. And so that served as a platform and knowledge as we then moved into what we did here with OnStar Go with Watson. And so they are related together and they're just two different markets, different growth rates. So what we call the strategic imperatives, businesses that are were either building, they're new and, and now clearly at scale at $32 billion and 40% of the company. And the other businesses, our core franchises, while may not be growing, are very important businesses. They're profitable businesses. They're solid businesses together. Now, you've ramped up acquisitions, and a lot of these acquisitions in part to build up mm. data and boost the power of Watson. Is that something and a strategy that we should expect to see continue? Yes, and you're right, we've done a good number of acquisitions, and in fact, over the last two years, 25 acquisitions. And how we look at them is example for Watson Health. Uh, that is an industry that would benefit tremendously from data, data that you had the ability to reuse, anonymize and reuse. And so you saw us acquire companies like Truven and Fitel, Explorus and Merge, ways to train Watson. So that is all for Watson Health. On the other hand, you would have just seen what we acquired, a company called Promitory, which is the world's most expert group in compliance and risk and financial services. They'll be training Watson as we launched Watson Financial Services. So where there's information, where there's expertise, because you're really changing industries and you're changing processes. You need those skills, you need that information, as well as just the technology itself. And that's a really important differentiator for what we do.